Hi, my name is John Kilpatrick. Today I am introducing to you a video that I feel compelled by the Holy Spirit to put out because there's an urgency in my spirit about the things that's about to happen. This is very unusual for me to do this. I uh, have been pastoring for 53 years. I started pastoring in 1970. And this is one of the very, very few times I could name on one hand the times that I've ever come before the public with a message this important. But this is an important message. It's entitled, The Earth is Speaking. Are you listening? The first time this happened was back in um, 2001. I was leaving my chair on Sunday morning. I was pastoring Brownsville. And as I was leaving my chair to come up and address the audience on that Sunday morning, I was getting ready to preach. I didn't know when I left my chair that by the time I reached the pulpit, these words was going to come out of my mouth. But I said, by Tuesday, you will see on your television something that will shock you and you will say, oh my God. And what happened was, it was 911 came right out of the clear blue. But I gave my church warning on that Sunday, two days before, I gave them warning that this was coming, and I didn't even know what it was myself when I gave them the warning. The second time that I gave a warning like this to my congregation down through the years was in December the 19th, 2019. I came before the church. Everything was still normal. The COVID has not happened yet, and I gave this word to the church and I told them that you need to be aware that things are about to change and darkness is going to turn into gross darkness and you're going to see things that you've never seen before. Sure enough, it happened in 2020. And then the third thing is today, I'm coming to you with this message about the earth is speaking. Are you listening? I'm dealing with four sins, four major sins that will cause the earth to convulse. And if you look in the Bible, you'll see that man and land are indelibly connected. The land will manifest what's going on with the man. When God put Adam in the garden, he put him there to tend the land, and the land and Adam worked together, and it was a beautiful thing. But when man sinned, the land began to rebel against man, and the land began to manifest what was going on in man. Well, that same thing is going on today. That same concept, that same principle is working today where the land is going to manifest the sins that are proliferating in our nation and in the nations of the earth. They are proliferating. They are increasing at alarming rates. It's hard to keep up with it, but you're going to see the land begin to show forth and you're going to begin to see it act out in the way of earthquakes, volcanoes, the weather and many other things is something that you need to be aware of. It's going to start happening rapidly and quickly. Can't tell exactly when, but it's coming. The Holy Spirit spoke to me early in the morning and he said, I want you to warn the people this is coming. They need to be aware so they won't be afraid. They will pray. So thank you for watching this today. I believe it's going to be informative. I believe it's going to be something that will stir you but I also believe that God's going to be speaking to this nation and the nations to get right with God and to be ready for his soon coming. Thank you for watching. The other morning I woke up 3.15 and the Lord was showing me a bunch of stuff. Some of it I'm not going to be able to preach today because it would take too long to preach it. But one of the things that the Lord showed me was it was like watching television and there was a meteorologist on television. <clears throat> And the meteorologist said, there's a system in the Pacific, and it's coming in in the Pacific Northwest, and it's a great low-pressure system. And you can see the low-pressure system swirling up in the Pacific Ocean right off the West Coast, right around Oregon. And this meteorologist said, this is a low barometric pressure. It's going to bring high winds. It's going to bring a lot of rain. And he said, within not this week, but the next week, it will have worked its way into parts of America and it will go south. And he said, all that rain that's in the Pacific now this week, by the middle of next week, will be along the Gulf Coast and bring a lot of rain. 
So as I saw that and I woke up, here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, when my son was on the earth, he told them, you can read meteorology really good. And you say, if the sky is red and lowing, you know that showers are coming. But if there's a south wind, you know that there's going to be clear skies. And the Lord said, my people have learned meteorology really good. But he said, my preachers are not good meteorologists because they're not telling people what's coming. And he said, I want you, and along with others I'm talking to, he said, I want you to tell them that there's a low pressure system up here and it's going to bring chaos. It's going to definitely bring chaos to parts of the world. And he said, but I want you to tell the people before it gets there that it's coming. And it's because of the laden, the earth being laden with increasing sin. And violence is increasing. Um, lawlessness is increasing. You know as well as I do, and I, have to, I don't have to give you a litany of things, but they're all increasing. And because they are, the earth is going to start convulsing. And when it does, you're going to see it on your television. And it's going to, take, it's going to really take, take you back when you begin to see some of the things that's about to come forth on the earth. So today I'm not really speaking as a pastor, <clears throat> but I want to speak today as a prophet. I want to speak prophetically to you and tell you what the Lord said. He said, tell the people that there are signs that's coming in the earth. And he said, the earth is going to convulse and vomit. <clears throat> and he said, I want you to tell them to be prepared to see it because it's going to capture the attention of the world over and over again. So that's the word. Don't let that worry you, though, because here's what the Holy Spirit said. But tell my people I'm going to take care of them. How many of you believe he will? He's going to take care of us. And so as I preach today, this is a little bit of a heavy message. Not really is, so just be prepared for that. But as I preach today, if you hear some things that you agree with, I want you to amen. You know, don't let this cast you down. But this is something that the Lord said you've got to preach because I want the live streaming audience to hear it and I want God TV audience to hear it. So are you ready? Yes. Let's go. You may be seated. Thank you. Bible has all along had these scriptures there for us to see 
But now in our time, there's a fresh emphasis on natural things that God is going to be speaking through. We have to learn to interpret things. We have to learn to interpret the times and the signs. Just as the meteorologist will interpret things that's forming down in the Gulf or off the coast of Africa, and they have got it down now to a science that they can tell pretty well how the wind currents are, where it's going to hit, what velocity it's going to be, and people will begin to leave in mass by the millions because they have meteorology down pat. It's a science. But when it comes to warning people about signs taking place, there's a lot of silence. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to begin to talk and tell the people, when I show you these things, I want you to begin to warn them of things that's coming upon the earth so that they'll understand and know. It's not that the Lord is doing this, but it's that the earth was so affected by the fall of Adam and Eve. And there's a direct connection between land and man. <clears throat> and I'll go through that in just a minute. So I heard the Lord say to me plainly, though, before all this stuff happened in Iceland and before this happened in Israel, the Lord said to me, tell them that the earth is going to begin to manifest and get the attention of the world and that we're living in a time of major rampant sin, open sin, open rebellion against God now and lawlessness on a level that we're not used to seeing. It's blatant now, it's out in the open. How many of you can say that since this has happened in Israel, we've seen people take to the streets and we've been shocked at the numbers of people that stands against Israel and stands against God. But that should make you no difference. No matter what the world does, we're standing for Israel and we're standing for the Lord. Can you shout amen? So there's some things about creation that I want you to understand. Creation has intelligence. It really does. You might not ever think about it like that, but it does. A tree has a created intelligence. Animals do. When an earthquake is getting ready to take place, the animals will begin to run and leave. When there's a tidal wave coming, animals will begin to flee the opposite direction. They know. They have intelligence. Plants and birds and trees and fish have all been given intelligence. They have intelligence. And even the earth, the earth speaks. Job, let me read this to you again. It says, Job said, ask the beast and they will teach you. And the fowls of the air and they will tell you. Speak to the earth and it will teach you. And the fish of the sea shall declare unto you. In other words, these natural things have intelligence and they will talk and they will speak, but you've got to learn how to interpret them. Psalm says, when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, they came from a people of a strange language. And when they got down to the Red Sea, the Bible said the sea saw the, the people of Israel come out of Egypt. And when they got to the Red Sea, the Bible says that the sea, the Red Sea saw it and fled, opened up for those people of God. When the Red Sea saw the two and a half million Jews being led by Moses, when the sea saw Moses coming with God's people, God's chosen people, the Bible said the sea saw it and opened up and fled. It just opened up for the people of God. The sea did. The sea saw it. I didn't know the sea could see. Did you? Seesaw. And the Bible says the heavens declare. In Psalms 19, the heavens declare the glory. The heavens declare the glory. And the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. That's the heavens, the planets, the stars. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he set a tabernacle for the sun. Isaiah said, 
For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with, pray, uh, with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into singing before you. Now, imagine for a minute, this is not just an allegory. This is something that will really happen. You see, because the Bible said all things were made by him, all things were made for him. So I want you to understand when Jesus comes back, those hills that you have driven through and those mountains that you have driven through with majestic views and you have been in awe at those major mountains and the trees, it says, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. You better not be in a swing associated with one because when that tree starts clapping his hands, it's going to shake you out of that swing, amen? But the Bible said that the mountains shall break forth before you into singing. Mountains were going to sing and the trees of the field will clap their hands. It said the earnest, in Romans, it said the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits the revealing of the sons of God. In other words, they're waiting for the church to come into what they're supposed to be. Even creation is waiting for God's people to be, have their eyes opened up so they can have revelation and illumination and rise up and begin to be the church at the end of the age. It's going to be the glory of God that's going to sweep the earth that the mountains and even nature will join in and say, praise the Lord, it's time. We've been waiting so long. It said, for the creation was subject to futility, not willing, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption in the glorious liberty of the children of God. We know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. But it says it's groaning and waiting until the sons of God are manifest and come forth. I believe that before the coming of Christ, there's going to be a mighty uprising of people of God that's going to be a different breed than it's ever been before. They're going to be sharp. They're going to be focused. They're going to be anointed. They're going to move in the glory. And they're going to be looking up toward the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a change coming, I promise you. Somebody shout amen. The Bible tells us that the land, I want to talk about this for a while, about the earth, the land. The land can mourn. Hosea said, hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there's no truth, no mercy, and no knowledge of God in the land. In other words, what, the, what he's saying here is the land is languishing. The land was meant to work with man. But when Adam sinned, the land even turned against Adam and wouldn't do what Adam told it to do. Weeds came, thorns came, thistles came. And it said, because there is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land, the land is languishing. It's mourning. The land is actually mourning. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, and the fish of the sea shall also be taken away. It's saying that sin is going to do this to the land. Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 4 says, How long shall the land mourn? It says it again. In a different book, the land will mourn. I didn't know the land could mourn. And the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. The beasts are consumed and the birds because they said he shall not see our last end. You're seeing whales beaching themselves. You're seeing birds falling right out of the skies. They're flying through. You're just seeing them falling dead to the, to, the, to the ground. You're seeing sharks come closer to the edge now of the, of the beach than they ever have before. Fish, major fish by the thousands, tens and hundreds of thousands, now just dying and floating to the top of the water and washing up to the shore. It said, the beasts are consumed, the birds, because they said, he doesn't see our last end. The land can mourn, the earth does not have a soul, but yet it can mourn. It's a great mystery and it's shocking to see it in the scriptures that the land can actually grieve 
and mourn, and it has to be looked into, and that's what I want to do this morning. And I want to capture your attention, those of you that's watching me by live streaming, I want to capture your attention, and I want us to look at this, and let's see what the Bible says. There's a mystery and a theology between God and the land. The Bible mentions the land. It's a recurring theme throughout all the scriptures. It mentions the land over 1,600 times in scripture. More than justification by faith. It doesn't mention justification by faith that, all, that many times. Or the virgin birth of the baptism or the Christ's return. The Bible mentions the land 1,600 times. And it's just now coming out in these end times. The Lord's opening a lot of our eyes and we're beginning to see the connection and how the land is going to tremble and convulse as sin increases. And there's going to be a lot of shock when people seize it on breaking news, what's happening in different parts of the world. And I'm telling you today as a prophet of the Lord, I'm telling you as a prophet of the Lord, you're going to see it and you're going to remember what I'm saying to you today. I promise you, you will remember this message. The Bible says, by him were all things created in heaven and earth, the visible and the invisible. No matter if they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. He created all things and they were created for him. The Revelation says, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you have created all things and for your pleasure they are and were created. Creation works for God and does God's work. All things were created by him and they're created for God. And God cares for the land. I want you to look at a very touching scripture in light of what's happening with Hamas, in light of what's happening with Israel, the little tiny shiver of land that they have there, Deuteronomy 11 Moses was writing, and he said, the land where you go into to possess it is not as the land of Egypt. He said, it's not like Egypt from whence you came out, where you sowed your seed and watered it with your foot as a garden of herbs. But the land where you go to possess it is the land of hills and valleys that drinks water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God cares for. Wow, look at that. It's a land... You might look at the land of the Holy Land and think, well, my goodness, why does the Lord? He loves it. But it's not what it's going to be either. And the Bible said that the Lord God cares for that land. The eyes of the Lord are always upon the Holy Land, Israel. He loves it. He loved Canaan. And he gave it to Abraham and to the Jews forever. And the Bible said the Lord's eyes are always upon it from the beginning of the year, even to the end of the year. He doesn't take his eyes off that holy land. And the Bible says that there's a connection between sin and the land. Adam said, because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife, and, and God said unto Adam, because you've hearkened to the voice of your wife and you've eaten of this forbidden tree, which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. I told you not to eat of it. And cursed now is the ground for your sake. In sorrow, it's, the, the, the ground is going to disappoint you and you're going to have much sorrow because now the land is not going to work with you. The land has got a heavy load of sin on it and it's not going to work with you anymore. Communication has been broken. You was a steward. I created you to be a steward of the land and now have you lost your stewardship of the land and the land is not going to work with you and you're not going to be able to work with the land. And as long as man was right with God, the land was beautiful. It was luscious. It produced with no toil. And as soon as sin got connected with both man and the land, Man was even created from the earth. Man was created from land. Man, land. Man lost control and dominion of his stewardship of the land, and the land came under a curse, and it started working against Adam and Eve. Man became a servant to the land. 
He was constantly having to deal with thorns, constantly having to clean out weeds that was trying to choke out his crops, constantly having to deal with bacteria and inf infections that got into the plants. And even the animals turned against Adam. He could try to correct them and they would pay no attention to him. Animals began to make all kinds of crazy sounds. They used to never make those sounds. They used to could communicate with each other. Adam could communicate with them. Adam could talk the language of the animals and the an animals could talk the language of Adam. <clears throat> but as soon as the fall happened, even the animals turned against Adam and Eve and communication was broken. So one of the first things that happened was the land and man and animals all were separated and cut off from each other and they couldn't communicate. It's a strange thing when Jesus comes back and puts his feet on the Mount of Olives and Armageddon takes place and Armageddon won't last but one day. Christ comes back on a white horse, we come back with him. And when Christ comes back and lands on the Mount of Olives, the Bible said even the earth will split when Jesus' feet touches the Mount of Olives. Even the Mount of Olives will split. That will be a sight to behold to see a mountain split when Jesus sets his feet on that mountain. And he'll come walking down off the Mount of Olives and walk into Jerusalem and set himself up in the temple to begin the millennial kingdom of God on the earth for a thousand years of peace. But listen to this. Isn't it strange that after the devil has been bound, and cast into hell. Now, all of a sudden, the lion is as meek as a lamb. And now the lion and the lamb lay down together, and they even love on each other. Now the animals can begin to communicate again. Now people that had all kinds of problems, everything just settles down as soon as the devil's been bound. You see what I'm saying? The devil brings about all this chaos. And the devil brings about all this disorder. But as soon as Jesus comes back, he puts an end to that. And peace breaks out on the earth for a thousand years. There'll be no marriage discord. There'll be no room. There'll be no place for courtrooms. There'll be no hospitals. There'll be no funeral homes. There'll be peace on earth and goodwill to men like the angel said in the very beginning. Friend, I'm telling you, there's a change coming, but until that change comes, be watching for the earth to convulse because of the level of sin that's increasing now daily. Watch this. Repentance can bring healing to the land. God said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and look at this unusual wording, I will heal their land. In other words, you'll be incomplete if I just forgive your sins and I don't heal the land. The land and man needs that unity. All through my whole Christian life, I have heard that saying that he will forgive our sins and heal our land, there's a, different, there's a definite connection between sin and land. It's a connection that if man will humble himself, the land will work with him. If man will humble himself and get right with God, the land will come in alignment with man getting right with God. But if man doesn't get right with God, the land is going to rebel. It's going to work against him. God can heal our land, and when this happens, we'll get greater benefits than we've ever known before. When Jesus died on Calvary, I want you to look at this. This is so interesting. When Jesus died on Calvary and he took on the sins of the world, there was, the man on the middle cross was Christ. He was God. They stretched him out like a male factor on that middle cross. And he took on himself the sins of the world. He took on himself, one man on the middle cross took on the sins of the whole universe, all of mankind. I believe that's why the Bible said the sky turned dark 
because the devil is the prince of darkness. I believe the demons gathered like bats and they came against that man on the middle cross. Let me tell you something, friend. There's never been a hero like Jesus Christ. Nobody could do what Jesus did. Nobody could do what Jesus did. He was strong. He was a champion of champions. And when he hung on that middle cross, every devil came against him. He had no help from any source, but by himself, he defeated the powers of hell and the grave. Only he can do that, and he did it by the power of God. Somebody shout amen. But notice what happened when Jesus hung on the, on the cross. The Bible said there was a great earthquake. Now, isn't that strange? What a time for an earthquake. What does that mean? When he took on all the sins of the world, the earth saw the sins of the world being piled on Christ, and the earth couldn't take it. It reacted. It convulsed. And the earth shook. There was a great earthquake. When Jesus died at the sixth hour, he gave up the ghost. In connection with him becoming the sin offering, the earth convulsed. It just, it just convulsed. That's what it does. When there's an intensification of sin, the earth quakes. Notice this. So unusual. Three days later, when Jesus made an end to sin, and he went down into hell, and he defeated and spoiled powers and principalities, and he did it single-handedly. And he came up out of the grave and he brought those that was down there in paradise in the heart of the earth in Abraham's bosom. When Jesus came forth from the grave, he conquered sin, death, and the grave. And when he came forth, the Bible said the earth quaked again. Look at it. On resurrection morning, it said, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Listen, two earthquakes in three days. And Israel doesn't have that many earthquakes. Listen to me. When he became sin, the earth reacted. And whenever he resurrected from the dead and he conquered sin, the earth, the Bible said there was a great earthquake. You know what a great earthquake is? 6.0 or above. And so not only when Jesus rose that morning from the grave, that got some attention, but the earthquake also heralded his resurrection and said, yeah, he's the one. He's, he, he dealt with it. He thoroughly dealt with the sin issue. And the earth responded. So when he died, there was an earthquake. And when he resurrected, there was an earthquake. So there's three points I want to make about this. The things that we do on the earth, the things that we do, the sins that people commit has an extraordinary effect, a cause and effect, and an impact on the land. Second thing is the land manifests God, judgment, because of man's sin. The earth will manifest God's judgment because of man's sin. Three, land can be healed, it can be cleansed, and it can be made whole. Now there's four sins that the Bible mentions that defiles the land. And the Bible mentions these four and they're powerful sins, and they're all in motion right now. That's why we're living in the last days. Everything is accelerated. That's why the Lord said to me, tell the people that the earth is going to start manifesting because sin is increasing. The end of the age is coming. The tribulation is trying to begin. The tribulation can't begin yet because the church is still here, but things are increasing. Lawlessness, theft, Death, you know, killing, ab abortion, abominate, abominable sins are increasing. But the Bible said there's four sins that has a major effect on the land. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 25, the land is defiled. Therefore, I visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomits out her inhabitants. You therefore must keep my statutes and my judgments and not commit any of these abominations, neither of your own nation or any stranger that sojourns among you. All these abominations 
have the men done in the land which were living on this land before you came. And the land was defiled and God said the land vomited them out. And God's saying to the Jews, they defiled the land and the land vomited them out. They couldn't remain there. It said, verse 28, that the, God said, take heed that the land spew you not out also when you defile it. If you get in there and you think you're better and you can get by with it and you think it's not going to happen because you got some kind of a special deal with me, God said, you get in there and you defile that land and you commit these abominable sins, it's going to spew you out just like you did all the other generations before you as it spewed out the nations that were before you, it said. So the first sin that I want to talk about is idolatry. God said, I will repay them double for their wickedness and their sin because they've defiled my land with the lifeless forms of their images, their vile images, and they have filled my inheritance with their detestable idols. Today, there's a spirit of strong delusion in America People think they can worship another God besides our God. And people are led to believe that there's another way to the Father other than through Jesus Christ. This is not the case. You'll be cursed if you believe that. There is only one God. There is only one Jehovah. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He had a son, and his son's name is Jesus Christ, and he's the Savior of all mankind. There is no other way to the Father saved by Jesus Christ. So be careful, the Lord is saying here. Don't be caught up in detestable lies and believe a lie and be damned. Let me show you what happened. Let me give you one case in point. I could give you 15. Let me just give you one case in point. In the days of Elijah, the nation of Israel had backslid. Jezebel now and her husband Ahab was on the throne leading Israel. Idolatrous worship was going on under Jezebel and Baal, and it was worship called Baal worship. And it was during the time of Elijah the prophet. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, I want to read you what the Bible says about blessings. It says, if it shall come to pass, if you'll obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe carefully his commandments, which he commands you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. That's what he'll do. The Lord will open unto you his good treasure, the heavens, and he will give you rain on your land in its season, and he'll do that to bless the work of your hand. And you'll be so blessed that you'll lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. Deuteronomy also says this, but it shall come to pass if you don't obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all of his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. One of the curses is, in verse 23, your heavens, which are over your head, shall be bronzed over. And the earth, which is under your feet, will become iron. And the Lord will change the rain of your land to powder and dust. If you don't obey the Lord and you don't serve him, and you don't give him honor for creating you and giving you a chance to live on the earth, but you're going to turn after some other god some other evil entity, and you're going to give your worship to that. He'll change the rain that he would normally give you in your land. He'll change it to powder and dust. From the heaven, it shall come down on you until you're destroyed. This land will destroy you if you turn to idols. So isn't it interesting that the heavens were shut and no rain could fall in the days of Elijah for three years, because they were falling into Baal worship. The children of Israel were falling into Baal worship. And the Bible said God raised up Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, and he said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, Elijah prophesied, and he said, There will be no rain. For three years, these years, except it comes out of my mouth. 
You have turned to Baal. You have turned away from the Lord. And now the heavens will withhold the rain until I say so. And you remember when Elijah built the altar to God? And those of Baal worship built their altars. The prophets of Baal built their altars. And Elijah prayed, they prayed. And you know, the Bible said that the Lord answered Elijah by fire. And it said, the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked it up, all the waters that was in the trench. Now, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they repented. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. When they saw the fire of God and that God answered by fire, they repented right there. And they knew that they was in a false religion. And Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal. And Elijah brought them down to the brook, Kishon, and he killed them. Elijah killed 400 false prophets himself. And then Elijah said something interesting. Ah, after he killed the 400 false prophets, and after the children of Israel repented and said, the Lord, he is God. Look what he said. Elijah said, go up now and eat and drink, for now there's a sound of rain. Rain's coming. As soon as that idolatry was dealt with and people repented, now the rain's going to come back. You see what I'm saying to you? Listen to me. There's a cause and effect. And if things are not happening, something's causing it. And the Lord told me to tell you. And it gets more interesting. The second sin that the Bible said will cause the earth to quake, the second sin that the Bible said will cause the earth to convulse and to vomit is the sin of immorality, fornication, and homosexuality. Leviticus 18 discusses sexual sins, which includes homosexuality and bestiality. Look what it says about nations that defile themselves with sexual perversions. This is what God said. Now listen to me. I'm not preaching John Kilpatrick. I'm preaching the word of God to you. And I don't know if you still have an ear to hear the word of God, but if you have an ear to hear the word of God, you better pay attention. And those of you that's watching me by television, and those of you that's listening to me by live streaming, you better have an ear to hear what I'm saying. This is not something that a denomination or a church or a preacher come up with. This is the word of God. And I say this with a calm spirit and helping you to understand we're going to have to come to grips with this one way or the other. So listen to what it says. God said, do not defile yourselves with any of these ways because this is how the nations that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land, he said, was defiled. And I punished them for their sins. And the land vomited out. The land vomited out its inhabitants. Everybody look at me and listen to me. God said the land vomited the people out. Caused them to have to evacuate. They couldn't stay on that land. For whatever reason, they had to evacuate. God caused the land to cause the people to spew them out where they couldn't come back. God said, if that's the way you're going to treat me, I'm God. When there was nothing, I created the earth. I created you out of nothing, and I put you on the earth and gave you a shot at life. And this is how you're going to treat me, and you're going to worship other gods, and you're going to take your body that I gave you as a temple of the, th the things of God, and you're going to pervert it with anal sex and having sexual relations, men with men and women with women. This is how you know. God said, the land will vomit you out and you won't be able to return. And God called it an abomination. I'm going to tell you, quit being so cotton-picking religious. Quit being so politically correct. This is the word of the Lord and we had better pay attention to it. I said we better pay attention to it. What I'm talking about today, what my subject is, is the land. With all this stuff going on about trends and the schools teaching kids, little kids, 
about trends and you're not really a female, you're not really a male, and all this stuff is happening, it's increasing the sin in the land and the earth is going to convulse. And it's going to convulse in ways you can't begin to imagine. Here's what the Lord said to tell you. He said there's going to begin to be things happening that the earth has never seen, but it's still going to be convulsing and vomiting, but it's going to be things the earth has never seen. And they're going to say, what does this mean? I don't even know what it means because I haven't seen it either. But the Lord said it will be on people's lips. Wonder what this means. But you're going to see it and you're going to remember this message. Jeremiah chapter 23 said, the land is full of adulterers. The land is full of people that's not faithful to a marriage partner. Jeremiah said, the land is full of adulterers. Full of it. Full. Full. Because of the curse, the land lies parched. And the pastures in the desert are withered. The prophets follow an evil course and use their power unjustly. Listen to this. In the days of Noah, there was extreme sexual perversion. There was even fallen angels coming down to having sex with the daughters of men. And society, civilization had been so corrupted and polluted with the natural and the supernatural coming together in sexual unity that giants came forth from that union. It was Nephilims. The sons of God were copulating and having relations with the daughters of men and it produced a, a hybrid race that disgusted God. And God said, I can't permit this. I'm going to destroy the earth and all of mankind. And he found Noah and if you don't think God will destroy sin, you better think again. And God found a man by the name of Noah and told him to build a boat. And he built this boat and it was only big enough for eight people and two of all the animals. And the Bible said that the way God destroyed the earth, the way God destroyed those antediluvians was with storms. It was with storm. The barometric pressure dropped on the planet, not just in the Middle East, but the barometric pressure dropped on the planet. And the Bible said it had never rained before. There was just a dew and a mist that would come up from the earth to water the earth. Rain began to fall. And I'm talking about training storms for 40 days and 40 nights. And it flooded the earth and killed all of mankind with the exception of Noah and his family, and the animals. So it said in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, all the fountains of the great deep, the cisterns in the heart of the earth that held water, rain water, the, the water that God had stored away, God even commanded that water to burst forth and it began to come up and water came up from the earth and water came down on the earth for 40 days and drowned everything. And the windows of heaven were open and the rain was on the earth 40 days and nights. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was such sexual perversion that even when the angels came and warned Lot to his house, they came to his house to warn Lot to get out. The men of Sodom saw the angels come to Lot's house and they tried to capture those angels and have sex with them. They were just burning at lust. And the angels had to blind those men. And they went staggering out into the night because they were trying to overwhelm and rape those angels. That's how powerful and how lustful sin and lust had broken out in the earth. And so the Bible says that the Lord rained round brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. He overthrew those cities. God overthrew those cities. And all the plain, inhabitants of the cities, and the Bible says, look at this, what grew on the ground. He scorched it. Scorched it. He put an end to it. 
you better be careful. Just like, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to stick my neck out, and I'm going to say it. It don't bother me a bit to say it, but I think it's going to give some of you heartburn. But here's what I want to say. Just like these people out there in America marching with the Palestinians and marching for Hamas, and they're protesting against Israel, you see that happening? That same thing, that same spirit is loose in America where people are protesting for the rights of homosexuals and transgenders. And it defies everything that has to do with God and his holiness. And if you ever fall in that trap, you're going to be lost and you're going to be down with the rest of them. And I'm telling you, you better back up and think twice. You better be what God's for and you better be against what God's against. That is the truth. I want to say it again. I want to say it again. You better stand for what God stands for, and you better be against what God's against. Hear me, everybody. Hear me as clear and as plain as I can say it. You have no choice in the matter. If God's against it, I'm against it. I don't need to know nothing else. If he's against it and he says it's abomination, it's abomination. Listen, God has not turned his back on the homosexuals, but he's turned his back on that homosexual spirit. It's damning this country. It's going to damn America. Don't you be damned with it. I can't say it any plainer. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? We know to stand with Israel because God said to stand with Israel. We know to stand against homosexuality because God said to. But once you ever start vacillating between, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Well, I'm going to tell you what, when the whole thing, when the whole shooting match catches on fire, you're going to be caught on fire with it. You better pull away and you better stand with what God stands for and stand against what God stands against. And I'm not making any apologies. Don't expect one. It's the truth. Listen, if I preach this in many churches this morning, half the crowd would get up and walk out. <clears throat> you know why? Because they believe in the culture more than they believe in the Bible. <laughs> well, You say, I don't like you, Brother Kilpatrick. Well, if you'll hang around, I have some better sides to me. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen to this. The third reason that the earth will convulse and vomit is because of the shedding of innocent blood. I want to show you something. Listen, the Lord showed me something, and I want you to see it. This is something that I hadn't ever preached before. God said, in Numbers 35, do not pollute the land where you are. Bloodshed pollutes the land. Look at it. It says in the Bible, bloodshed pollutes the land. Atonement can't be made for the land on which the blood has been shed except by the blood of the one who shed it. In other words, they'll have to pay the cost of it. Do not defile the land where you live, where I dwell, for I, the Lord, dwell among the Israelites. I want to show you something about Cain and Abel. I'd never seen this before. Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel and slew him, killed him, murdered him in cold blood. And the Lord said to Cain, where's Abel, your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? One of the first things where your rebellion shows up is in your mouth. When you take a stand opposite of God's, you'll become a smart aleck. And you'll find fault with anybody that tries to take a stand for holiness. And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. In other words, what God's saying is, I as God can hear the voice of that blood that blood doesn't need vocal cords. That blood doesn't need a tongue. That blood doesn't need lungs. I hear that blood crying out to me from the ground. And now he said, you're cursed from the earth. Look at this. This is what God said to Cain. 
You're cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood. You said the earth has opened her mouth. The earth opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. He said Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel brought God an offering from the flocks, a blood offering. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. He made his living from the ground. It said, when you till the ground from now on, it won't yield to you anymore because innocent blood's been spilled on this ground. The ground now will turn against you. And he said, when you till the ground, it won't yield unto you its strength. But a fugitive and a vagabond shall you be in the earth. I looked up that word vagabond and I was shocked. I always thought I knew what vagabond meant. But you know what it means? You're going to be homeless and unemployed the rest of your life. A vagabond means, and here's the, here's the definition, <clears throat> it means one who has no home, homeless, a desperate feeling of having no place to go, a desperate feeling of not belonging anywhere, not being able to be employed, no chance to have vision or good outlook, a good outlook for your future. It won't take root. Your destiny won't take root. So now all of a sudden something came together in my mind because what's causing all this proliferation of homelessness in America? Listen to me. The largest city in America is New York City on the East Coast. And the earth is vomiting out people out of New York City. They're leaving it by the thousands. That's one of the major abortion capitals of the world where they're doing full-term abortions. And the earth is vomiting, the city's vomiting people out. They're coming to Florida. They're going to Texas. They're coming to Georgia. They're going to South Carolina, all kinds of places. They're leaving there by the tens of thousands every month. There's a mass exodus, and people are leaving California by the hundreds of thousands, and they're settling in Texas. They're settling in Arizona, and they're settling in all other kind of places, all up and down the Gulf Coast. They're leaving California. The earth is vomiting them out. Why? Because of the shedding of innocent blood. The cities are being vomiting, at, they're vomiting out the inhabitants. And what you're going to see in America, and I want you to hear me because I'm telling you the truth, the cities that continue on with this killing of the, the innocent and shedding of innocent blood, when they kill these babies and their blood is crying out, oh Jesus, oh God, help me. And God hears them crying out from the ground. God is about to raise up and he's about to bring judgment in a way that you can't begin to even understand. The earth is crying out. The earth is mourning and the earth is travailing. The earth is groaning because of the shedding of innocent blood. And homelessness, homelessness is going to increase in beautiful cities across America that used to be picturesque and was on travel folders. Now you don't want to go there because there's people in the streets by the tens of thousands shooting up out of their mind, their mental cases, all over these beautiful cities that America once had. The city by the bay is full of homelessness. Why? Because those areas have killed so many innocent children. Now there's homelessness everywhere. God said, because you've done this, you're going to be homeless. And you won't be able to find a job. Are you all hearing what I'm saying to you? Yes. I know this is a heavy message. And believe me, I don't sit around and just try to think up some of this stuff to preach to you. I'm preaching to you what God's giving me. Yes. And we have a larger pulpit than just what's in this church here this morning. Yes. But I, the Holy Spirit said, I told the Lord a long time ago, if you'll give it to me, I'll give it to them. I won't back up. I won't get locked jaw. I'll tell what you tell me to tell. And what, what, I, and what I'm trying to say, 
What I'm trying to say is I'm not against anybody. I love everybody. I'm a benevolent man. And I love the homosexuals. I love them. But I'm just saying the sin is an abomination to God and the earth is crying out and you're going to begin to see with the proliferation of these sins in these last days, you're going to see the earth just convulsing and vomiting and you're going to see earthquakes and you're going to see storms and you're going to see volcanoes on levels that you've never seen before and you will remember this message that I'm preaching. You will remember it. Number four, and this is the last one. Number four is broken covenants. The Bible said the earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. The people must bear their guilt for breaking covenant. Therefore, earth's inhabitants are burned up and very few are left. God looks at covenant as sacred. These are oaths that must not be broken. Why are we seeing a proliferation of divorce? Because it's a breaking of covenant till death do us part. It's sad. America made a covenant with God. Those who came to Jamestown in 1607 in the Virginia Compact, the reason why they came, they said, was to propagate and to expand the gospel of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ and to take the gospel to people who were lying in darkness and had no knowledge of the one true God. The pilgrims arriving in Massachusetts stated the same thing in 1620. They proclaimed, having undertaken a voyage for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. John Winthrop said, in and leading 700 Puritans to Massachusetts in 1631. Others may come to the new world for the wealth and for the furs, but we come with another goal, another end. We come and entered into an explicit covenant with God to be his people in a new world. According to the historian William Federer, such Christian compacts became the model for the U.S. Constitution. Our founders put God first, and foremost in the Declaration of Independence. Scriptures is even on the Liberty Bell to proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. America must not forget the Judeo-Christian foundation and the covenants that were made with God when our nation was founded. If we forget, God said the land will vomit and the land will spew you out if you break covenant with God. One covenant I want to draw your attention to, and I close. The Bible says this in Genesis, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, said, unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt, the Nile River, to the river Euphrates. And you'll see it on the screen. There it is. Right there, the Nile River in blue. Euphrates River. God said, I'm giving you all this land. That includes Jordan, most of, uh, parts of Iraq, Syria, and even parts of Saudi Arabia. And I quit drawing the line because we don't know how far that way the line goes. But we do know it goes from the river of Nile into the Euphrates River. That's land they haven't gotten back yet. Somebody says, do you think this Psalms 83 is the war that's happening there right now? I think it very well could be. I think it's still developing. I think it's still simmering on the stove. I think it's possible. So the Bible said, the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram. He made a covenant with Abram, a covenant. God made a covenant. And when God makes a covenant, it's forever. And he said, under your seed, Abram, that's the Jews, have I given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. I will make of you a great nation, Abram, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is direct correlation to how God treats people 
He said, I'll treat them badly that treat you badly, and I'll treat them wonderfully that treat you wonderful. So God watches over his land, and he watches over Israel. When a nation mishandles Israel, and I want to just stop and say this. I want everybody to look at me and listen to me carefully. Oh, my God. October the 7th. Innocent blood. I'm saying this in context of what I'm preaching this morning. Innocent blood. Cutting babies' heads off. Killing little children's parents before their very eyes and the kids hiding out in the cabinet for 16 hours before they're rescued. Taking hostages. Shooting people. Raping women. Such unthinkable behavior. And that happened right there in Israel. I don't think that Hamas has counted the cost of the hell that's coming to them. And I'm not talking about necessarily through the IDF. I'm talking about from the hand of God. Because that's God's land. His eyes are on it from the beginning of the year to the ending of the year. That was innocent blood that was shed. They did nothing to nobody. There was already a ceasefire. So here's what I want to say to you in regard to what's going on in Israel right now and what's going on in Gaza and what may be about to go on in the other nations right around Israel. Just keep your station tuned because with that being shed, innocent blood being shed in Israel, we're going to see the retribution of God and it's not going to be pretty. So I could say a lot more about it, but I'm just going to press on. There's a direct correlation in how God treats people who treats Israel a certain way. He watches over it. When Russia comes against Israel in Ezekiel 38 and 39, which is called the War of Gog and Magog, <clears throat> when Russia comes with a coalition of nations, one of the first ones mentioned that comes with Russia against Israel is Iran, Persia. And there's other nations. It's a coalition of nations that comes with Russia against Israel. Here's what God said. And I want you to look at this. Watch how he uses the earth and he manifests himself in the earth when they start coming against Israel. Just listen to this. This is interesting. It shall come to pass at the same time when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will come up in my face. In my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. In that day there will be a great shaking in the land of Israel. There will be an earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea, the fowls of heaven, the beast of the field, and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. God said, I'm mad. And the mountains will be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. So that's what happens whenever Russia decides to come against Israel and God will destroy Russia on the seven mountains of Israel along with that coalition of nations. God said, the fish of the sea will see it. The fowls that fly into heaven will see it. The beasts that graze in the fields will see it everything that creeps upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth, all the nations will see it and will shake it in my presence. And the mountains will be thrown down and the steep places will fall and every wall will fall to the ground whenever I stand up to defend Israel and to keep them from this consolidated effort to destroy them. So that's why I say today with what's going on in Israel, with that blood being shed, innocent blood being shed right there in Israel in those kibbutzes and the killing and the capture and the hostages and the way that's being handled, 13 a day for four days and only God knows what's going to, how long they're going to keep the other ones. It's just insult and God sees it. Let me say this and I'll close. When the church is raptured, we're out of here. The Bible says right now we're hinderers. 
we hinder the Antichrist from coming on the scene and taking over. The Bible says we're hinderers. We're salt, we're hinderers, we're light. In other words, things can't just, you know, evil just can't take over right now because the church is still here. But once the church is taken out, oh my God, then in the book of Revelation, you see what happens to the earth. Oh, the land goes crazy. The Bible says that so many of the fish dies by the millions. Millions of humans die on the face of the earth. Let me read to you this from the book of Revelation about an earthquake that's going to take place in the uh, book of Revelation after the church is gone. Listen to this. When he'd opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. <clears throat> the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth even as figs cast untimely figs when the earth is shaken with a mighty wind and the heavens departed as a scroll. Revelation 16, when that angel poured out his veil into the air, there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven saying, it's done, and there was voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. The greatest earthquake of all times. So mighty an earthquake, the Bible says, and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. The cities of the nations fell. Now, everybody listen to me. This is not a regional earthquake. This is a worldwide earthquake where the world is experiencing one major earthquake. It's shaking the nations of the world. This is not a regional like a Los Angeles. This is the nations of the world. Look, look how powerful this earthquake is. The cities of the nations fell. Look at that. The cities of the nations, nations plural, fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance poor God to give her the cup of wine and the fierceness of his wrath. Every island fled away and mountains were not found. It cast them to the ground. Such a great earthquake. Islands passed away and mountains collapsed. Who can survive such a thing? See, the earth is convulsing. Why? The church is now gone. There's nothing to hinder it anymore. So the earth is convulsing like a mad person. It's like they're having seizures. It's like the earth is having a major seizure. The church is gone. The righteousness is gone. The people of God are not here. Now hell's taking over and the earth is going nuts. It's like it's going into seizures. <clears throat> it shall come to pass that who flees from the noise of fear shall fall into the pit and he that comes out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare for the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. The foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Look at this. The earth is utterly broken down. This is in Isaiah. It's talking about the earthquake in Revelation. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth has moved exceedingly. It sets 23 point something off a of perpendicular to give us the seasons. But the Bible says when this earthquake takes place that the earth is completely broken down and completely dissolved. The cities are collapsed. The islands have fled away. The mountains have collapsed. You say, I don't believe that. Well, you don't believe the Bible. I'm trying to tell you when the church is out of here, you don't want to be here. You don't want to be left, friends. I'm just trying to paint you a picture that if you're thinking somehow that it's going to be, you know, a great place to be and, well, I missed the rapture, but I'll tell you, no, it's going to be something that you're not prepared for and neither is anybody else. And it said, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. In verse 20, the earth shall reel to and fro. The earth will do this right here. Like a drunkard walking down the Bowery. The earth will reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. 
And that's why the Lord will burn off the outer cosmos of the earth and there'll be a new heavens and a new earth. So, I'm going to remind you one more time and I'm going to let you go. You will remember this message because I'm telling you, I heard from the Lord and the Lord said to tell them that there's things coming upon the earth that they need to be aware of that is coming. I'm just like that meteorologist that says there's a low pressure system up in the Pacific and it's not going to hit us right now but it's working its way this way and we'll see the results of that low pressure system. So there's some things that's not going to happen right at the moment, but it may happen before this day's out. And I'm just trying to tell you to be prepared. Don't, be, don't let it take your breath away and don't let it shake your faith. But you're about to see things as evil proliferates and evil men proliferates and things become more out in the open more bold. Nakedness, abominations, perversion, it becomes more bold. Innocent blood being shed, persecution of Christians, as you see all this stuff, the earth is just going to go into convulsions. So be ready for it.